Hello, I'm Steve Mann and this is Paper Classroom. Welcome to another history module and in this particular module we're going to be talking about paper making in England. Now the first ever recorded paper mill in England was established by John Tate around about 1490. However, it was never really commercially successful. It was later on in uh, 1589, a German by the name of Johannes Spielmann came over from, uh, from, from Germany and he established a paper mill. He changed his name to become to sort of fit in more with the uh, society. He became John Spillman. He was also the uh, jeweller to Queen Elizabeth I. He established a paper mill and was much more successful. If you remember in an earlier video, I talked about uh, Italy and the family there gaining power and control over paper making by bringing in rules, what I call the 50 mile rule. Well, John Spillman saw exactly the same. He saw the importance of the paper and how powerful you, you could be if you controlled it. So he also had a law passed. In those days, all paper was made from old rags and stuff like that. It wasn't made from trees or from um, high quality hemp and flax. It was just made from old clothing. So he had a law passed that no one was allowed to collect or store rags except for himself and he had the power to enter any premises day or night if he suspected that rags were being stored there so by controlling the raw material you control the paper making in his time these were the uh, paper mills in uh, England and Wales each little dot is a paper mill so you can see that many of the paper mills are around Dartford area, around here. The next uh, step in uh, paper making for the UK was round about the beginning of the 1800s. I mentioned in an earlier video that uh, because of the political situation in France, John Gamble brought over the machine that Robert had made and its plans so that it could be developed uh, fully over here. He met the Mayor of Dover. The Mayor of Dover introduced him to the Fordrinia brothers uh, who were stationers and the Fordrinia brothers found an engineer, a guy called Brian Donkin, to actually take those plans and take that machine and to develop it. This was the machine. Again, I showed you this in an earlier video. Um, Donkey went to work at uh, Frogmore Paper Mill and in 1803 he finally completed it. Now all this time the Fordrinia brothers had been pouring their money into this. They expected that they would get their money back manifold because they would sell either the machine or they would sell licenses for people to make the machine. However, sadly, that didn't happen. Everyone thought it was a wonderful idea. Everyone copied their machine and no one paid them a penny. And so sadly, the Fordrinia brothers went bankrupt. The only thing that remains of them is their name. So where you have a uh, horizontal wire, single wire machine, it's now known as the Fordrinia machine. The advantage of such a machine was that it reduced the cost of paper manufacture by 80%. So you could understand why the Ford Renew brothers were so keen to invest in it. On the site next to the Frogmore Mill, on the Apsley site, was another guy called John Dickinson. He looked at what they were doing, he looked at that machine and he thought, oh, I can do better than that. And he invented what we now call the VAT machine. And for a few years, the VAT machine and the Fordrinia machine competed side by side. Slowly, 
handmade paper making disappeared, machine made paper came in. The problem with the VAT machine is because of its circular action, uh, there was a limiting speed to the VAT machine, whereas there was no limiting speed to the Fordrinia, and therefore the Fordrinia won the competition. In 1821, there were 564 mills in England and Wales. In the town of Farnworth lived the Crompton family. Now the North West was particularly famous or renowned for producing textiles. The Cromptons were very heavily into textiles and they also saw uh, the advantage of paper. So they started to build paper mills. <clears throat> the most famous of the Crompton family was Thomas Bonsar Crompton. And he saw the uh, Robert machine, which simply made a sheet of wet paper. There had to be someone at the end with a big knife who would cut off the wet sheet and they would go away and dry it. So although the paper making machine was good for the continuous production of paper, it then went to sheeted form when someone at the end had to cut it off and go away and dry it. Crompton said, what will, this, what will make this paper machine really successful is if we have the continuous drying of the sheet. And that's what Crompton did. He developed the continuous drying of paper. As an aside, he also invented the size press. But so, um, drying sections, as we know them today, were due to uh, Thomas Bonsar Crompton. If you look carefully at the coat of arms of Farnworth, you'll see here cotton plants and you will see here three hornets. So when Farnworth was given its coat of arms, these were put on in recognition of the work that the Crompton family had done. Had it not been for their textiles from cotton and had it not been for their paper making, and as we know, the first paper maker was the wasp, then the town of Farnworth would never have existed. They built the mills, people came to live nearby, and Farnworth was formed. As mills got faster and machines got faster and wider, then the number of mills reduced. By 1900, there were less than 300 mills in England and Wales. By the year 2000, or oh, there was one point in 2000, the mills were closing rapidly at that time, there were just 100 mills. And today, in 2020, we have just 44 mills left. So, thank you for watching this video about paper making in the UK. I hope you enjoy it and I hope you'll enjoy many of our other videos. Thank you for your attention.